Hello class, I am your substitute teacher for the day. You may call me Dr. Quantum. The topic for today's lecture is quantum confinement. Let's start by remembering the time independent Schrodinger equation. As you can Whoa, what happened? Where am I? Why are there buttons on the wall? Hmm, energy? What does that do? Shut off the power or something? Ah, light got emitted from the cell. Does that mean... And there's two other buttons that seem to increase and decrease the dimensions of the cell. And there seem to be three light sensors in specific colors. Maybe... Quantum confinement? So, if this cell were to actually behave as a quantum mechanical system where the cell is a potential barrier and the energy button adds energy to the system then perhaps the color sensors are a type of combination lock that only open when the right wavelength of light hits them in a specific order since the wavelength of light which is violet that was emitted by the cell did not affect the sensors I may be onto something let's see how does quantum confinement work quantum confinement is essentially a particle in a box whenever a particle is confined in by potential well it gives rise to discrete or quantized energy levels where the transition between levels will emit a specific wavelength of light as determined by the energy of a photon. Also, a particle will only be considered confined when the dimensions of a material are of the same magnitude as a de Broglie wavelength of the particle's wave function, where the de Broglie wavelength gives rise to the wave-like behavior that all matter exhibits. Therefore, since we are in a cell, we are considering the wave function and energy equation of a 3D box. As you can see, both of the wave function and energy equation have a dependence on the length or dimensions of the barrier in which they are confined to. Therefore, if you are somehow able to dynamically control the dimensions of the cell, you should be able to control the wavelength of light that is observed through the particle transitions. Moreover, another way of understanding the relationship between the dimensions of the box is understanding that as a box expands, the quantized states get closer to one another, and as a box shrinks, there is an increase in the separation between the quantized states. This separation of quantized states is termed as a band gap or energy gap. Also, it is important to note that if you increase the dimensions of the box enough, the particle begins to behave as a free particle. Another important property of quantum confinement is that every allowed energy state shares the same band gap. In other words, the spacing between each energy level is the same, so there will only be one wavelength of light emitted no matter where the particle transitions from. So, the most important the important aspect of quantum confinement is the symmetry of the band gap and the dependence on the dimensions of the barrier. With quantum confinement, as the dimensions of the barrier are decreased, there is a blue shift in the wavelength of light that is emitted, and as the dimensions are increased, there is a red shift in the light wavelength of light that is emitted. Now, if we consider the three color sensors on the wall, then we need to alter the dimensions of the cell in order to emit the necessary wavelength of light required to activate or deactivate the sensors. So, in this case, we have to increase the dimensions of the box far enough to achieve yellow light, then decrease the dimensions to achieve blue light, and finally, increase the dimensions once more to achieve red light. Okay, let's hope this works. Hmm, let's try this. Aha! Yellow light was emitted. Okay, now for the blue light. 
Yes. And finally, we increase the dimensions once more. And there it is. Red light. Whoa. I'm back. Alright, class. Let's talk about quantum confinement.